You join me today at Sydney Parade and I'm carrying on my journey towards Greystones as I shall be visiting the next six railway stations on this line as I head towards Greystones. So I'm ready to ride the Ear Road Air and Dart service to the next station, Booters Town. So this station right behind me is Booters Town and honestly I'm amazed because we're right by the Irish Sea. I think we're actually in the Dublin Bay but we are right by the Irish Sea and it's just absolutely beautiful around here. This is a really nice station to be honest, really nice. So I am going to talk about Booters Town Station, but the histories will be very brief like in the last one. Now the station opened in January 1835, but it closed in 1960, it reopened in 1984. So I think you could just make it out of the distance, but beyond Dublin Bay is Health. I shall be visiting that station one day in a future video, but for now, I wait for the next service of Black Rock, which is the next station down the line. To be honest, I'm absolutely speechless. This line is just absolutely stunning. Now I thought the Dawlish Seawall between Exeter and Newton Abbott was brilliant, but this is almost topping that to be honest. This line is just absolutely very scenic. But the next station I'm coming at is Black Rock. And it's also got a lovely station building here as well. Really lovely. So I'm now going to talk about Black Rock Station and this is actually one of the original stations en route opened by the Dublin and Kingstown Railway. It's actually one of three stations that was opened. This station opened on the 17th of December 1834. <laughs> So this area is just lovely, but I am waiting for the next train to take us to, I think, is the least used station on the Dart Network, Seapoint. So I'm going to board the train now and let's head to Seapoint.
Now you probably recognize this railway station because Jeff Marshall has been to this railway station when he did the least used station on the Dark Network, Sea Point. I think this station is the least used station on the Dark Network. If I'm wrong, feel free to comment down below. But I'll tell you what though, this station is absolutely pretty. I think it's the retaining walls here that makes this station so pretty. I really like it. So this beautiful railway station opened on the 1st of July 1862 as Monks Town and Sea Point, but in 1863 it was renamed to its current name, Sea Point. So even though Sea Point is a fantastic station, I would recommend coming here to be honest. The next station I'm stopping off at is Dunleary. I think that's how you pronounce that to be honest. So I'll wait for the next train now to take us to Dunleary. So unfortunately I did kind of screw up. I thought the next station was Dunleary, but it's not. The next station I'm coming at is Salt Hill and Muggs Town. But to be honest though, this area is absolutely nice. It reminds me of two areas, one in England and one in Scotland. Dawlish in Devon and Kinghorn on the Five Circle Line in Scotland. But it is a lovely area around here. The station building, however, that reminds me of a suburban Glasgow station to be honest in the Glasgow area. Salt Hill and Muggs Town Station opened on the 1st of May 1837 as Salt Hill. In 1863 it was renamed to its correlates Salt Hill and Muggs Town. However though the station did close in 1960 but it did reopen in 1984. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the next station is Dunleary. So I'm waiting for the next train now, let's head to Dunleary. So I have made it to the right station this time, this is Dunlari, but it's actually called Dunlari Malin. And one thing I noticed about this station already is that it does have three platforms, two through platforms, but platform three is a bay platform for terminating trains. And also there's a lot of boats here because you're right next door to a harbour.
So I'm going to talk about this railway station, its history. It opened in 1837 as Kingstown Harbour, but in 1861 it was actually relayed to Kingstown. In 1921 it was actually relayed to Dunlary, and in 1966 it was relayed to its current lane, Dunlary Malin. So I'm about to leave Dunlary Malin, and to be honest, I'm actually glad I'm leaving this station because I'm sick and tired of trying to get this pronounced right, to be honest. So this station right behind me is Dunlary. In 1921, it's actually relayed to Dunlary. Dunlary. So I'm about to leave Dunhar Dunlary. So if I did butcher it up, I do apologise. But the next station shall be going to is Sandy Cove and Glass Hall. So I have now reached the next station, this is Stanley Cove and Glass Hall. And honestly, this station is in a cutting, but it's also on a very tight curve here as well. Very different to what we see today with the coastal stations. So Sandy Cove and Glass Hall Station opened on the 1st of October 1855 as Kingstown and Sandy Cove. In 1861 it was relayed to Sandy Cove and in 1967 it was relayed to its current name Sandy Cove and Glass Hall. So this part of the journey has really been an eye-opener as we travelled along Dublin Bay, travelling from Sydney Parade to Stanley Cove and Glass Hall. And honestly, the scenery has been beautiful. Do I compare it to the Dawlish Sea Wall? Pretty close, but I think the Dawlish Sea Wall is better, to be honest with you. But in the next video, I shall travel from this station and we're going to head to Greystones. But for now, I'm going to pop another video right here. Feel free to give that a click. People on screen now, YouTube channels and Patreon supporters, thank you for supporting the channel. I've been Cyrus Trace, thanks for watching, stay safe. I'll see you for the final part as I head to Greystones.